Hey guys, it's Art Weston. I'm gonna be doing a large line test uh, compilation today. Uh, this is with the entire Berkeley big game monofilament, uh, various line strength uh, lines. And I've got uh, all the samples set up, ready to go on the digital force gauge. So this is gonna be a kind of a one take uh, video, so let's hope I don't screw it up. Um, there's a chance that one of these will not act as expected, but uh, just uh, we'll have to ignore that one, and I'll I'll try to address that in the notes. Um, but there are 12 uh, Berkeley Big Game uh, line strengths that you can buy. Uh, they range from eight pound all the way up to 130 pound. I'm going to go from the smallest to the largest. Uh, one thing, I have checked all the diameters with uh, caliper, and their diameters are pretty accurate. They overstate them by about 1.5%, so those are pretty accurate. Uh, their line strengths, though, uh, are not accurate, um, and they are patterned in inaccuracy. So what I mean by that is the lines that are 20 pounds stated or less uh, are conservative by about 50%. So the actual breaking strength is 50% more than what uh, is stated right around there. Uh, between 25 and 50 pound class, uh, they overstate by uh, only 36%, so not as bad as a 50. Um, and then from 60 pounds to 130 pounds, they overstate by about a quarter. Um, so they somehow stagger um, that overstatement to be more extreme on the lower lines and less extreme on the higher lines. Um, there's some schools of thought about why manufacturers uh, overstate line. Uh, one of the uh, most common is the fact that they can just simply say they have a strong line. So if you have an eight pound line that actually breaks at 12 pounds, right? That's about a 50% increase. Um, you can say you have very strong eight pound line, um, but in actuality, it's really 12 pound. So, um, I'm going to try to do this rapid fire as fast as I can, um, and we'll see how it goes. I've got the eight pound already set up in the force gauge, and then I'm going to replace them as quickly as I can and just let the camera continue to roll. Uh, so let's see how we do. Here we go. Here's the eight pound. One thing you'll notice is that the lighter lines will stretch at a much further distance under the same amount of pressure. I'll get into that in another video. This one's about to break, 12 pounds exactly. That's about what I expected. Um, so the eight pound Berkeley Big Game broke at 12 pounds. Okay, let's set up the next one. Crank this back down. So this is gonna be the 10 pound Berkeley Big Game. My estimate based on prior tests is it's gonna break at 14 pounds or around there. All right, zeroed it out. Let's go again. It's gonna start stretching a little bit less on a per pound basis. But again, should break pretty soon. 14 pounds. So again, pretty consistent. Okay, get this one back down. We're gonna be now doing a 12 pound stated. This one should break at about 18 pounds. All right, zero out, here we go again. Hopefully you can, and I'll turn a little bit so you can see it. 12, break soon. 18.2, so very close to the 18 pound estimate. All right, now we're gonna go for the 15 pound test stated. This one will break right around 23 pounds. Almost ready here. Zero it out. Here we go. So we're looking for a 23 pound break. We're at 16, 17, 19, 20. 22, 23.2, so again, pretty consistent. All right, now we're gonna go for the 20 pound. 
which is a popular line class. This one's going to break around 31 pounds. So all those people that are fans of 21 or sorry, 20 pound Berkeley big game, they're actually using 30 pound line. Alright, so we're at 15, 9, 20, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31.0. Exactly as estimated. That was the 20 pound. So now we're going to go to the 25 pound. Now what's interesting is, I don't know what's going on with this 25 pound line or the 20, is that they're almost exactly the same line to me. The diameter is like a millimeter thicker on the 25 than the 20. It should be three millimeters. So I don't know if there's a labeling issue in the manufacturer or what it was, but again, I, this one should be right around 31, 32. So we're at 20, 29, 30.8. So it broke just below the 20 pound. I think they're the same line. Um, so again, I'm not sure what happened on their end, but the two spools, 20 and 25, to me are the same line. Um, so here we go. The next one's going to be 30 pound. This one should break at about 43 pounds. So get this down here. Zero it out. All right, we're looking for about 43. We're at 30 already, 40, 41, 42, 43.4. So right around the estimate. So again, everything's nice and consistent. Let's go to the 50 pound. And again, what you'll notice, I mentioned in the beginning, the line doesn't stretch as much under the same amount of force as the lighter lines. It's just an interesting characteristic of all monofilament lines. I'll get into that again in another video. All right, um, so this is a 50 pound test. We expect to break at about 67 pounds. So we're already at 30, 40, 50, 60, 66, 67, 68, 68.6. So a little higher than expected, but still within probably normal variance. Zero it out. All right, now we're going to 80 pound. This one should break right around 100 pounds. 99 pounds is my estimate. For those that are curious, uh, the, my um, calculations for the stretch of this line, when it's under about 80% um, of its main line strength um, is about 22%. Uh, so again, 80 pound here at 50 pounds, 60, 70, huh, okay, that one broke at 72. Um, oh, I made a mistake. This is the 60 pound line. Sorry, again, this is real time. Uh, the one prior uh, was the 50 pound. This one is the 60 pound. So the 60 pound broke at 72.4. It was estimated to break at 73. So again, we're all good. Um, this is the 80 pound. So again, this is a one take or lose it video. So I apologize for that mistake, but hopefully that correction made sense. Okay, here we go. This is the 80 pound. Should break it right around 99 to 100 pounds. Okay, we're already at 90, 94. Okay, so about five pounds less than estimated, but again, it's probably within reasonable variance. No big deal. Now we'll do the 100 pound. This one should break at around 126 pounds. This would be the one that you would use uh, if you want to catch a world record, all tackle world record. You don't want to go bigger than this one because the 130 pound exceeds the IGFA maximum. So again, we're already at 60 pounds, 70, 80, 90, 100, 
112, 15, 120, 122, 124, 126.4. So I estimated 126, 126.4. That's below the 132 pound maximum for a world record. So um, that would be as thick as you'd want to go on the Berkeley Big Game. Final line, the 130 pound. This one should break around 160 pounds. All right, here we go. And you'll see how quickly we load the line. Again, that goes back to how uh, these line characteristics work. So over 100 pounds, 120, 132, 140, 150, okay, 152. So I've had a prior prior breaks at about 160, so this one broke at 152, so slightly under the expectation. Um, but again, still, I guess, within reasonable tolerance. Um, obviously, the more samples you get, the more accurate the estimates can be. But uh, there you have it. Uh, so again, um, this Berkeley Big Game uh, has about a 22% stretch at an 80% of its breaking strength load. Um, it's overstated by diameter by, by just uh, over 1.5%, which is no big deal. And again, they overstate uh, their strength in increments. So between 8 and 20 pounds, they overstate by about 50%. Between 25 and 50 pounds, they overstate by about 36%. And then in anything over 60 pounds, they overstate by about 24%. And again, in my sample, the only weird line was between the 20 and 25 pound spools. They seem to be the exact same line. So I'm not sure if they're both supposed to be 25 or both supposed to be 20. Um, I'll have to see if I can get... Uh, two more samples to see if I can correct that. And again, hopefully the uh, my error in stating which uh, was the 60 pound or the 80 pound made sense in the video. Um, but if there's any questions, I can clarify it. Thank you.